first and foremost goal is like spark curiosity. Make people interested in science. Every single fact and every single field can be turned into a number of different short stories. And everything complicated is only complicated because someone is bad at explaining it. Learning how we actually work, it's breathtaking, it's amazing. Not everyone has heard of Kurzgesagt. What, what is it? It's a big science YouTube channel trying to do stuff that makes science interesting. We want to explain complicated things in an easily graspable way and make sciencey topics fascinating and beautiful. But we also want to tell stories and express how we feel about the universe from time to time. I started this channel after university because I didn't want to get a real job. The idea was to make two videos and that was honestly supposed to be it. I had like a gut feeling like, hey, just make this video in English too. Just like translate it, upload it. And then it went viral. Like really not planned to be for somebody. We just like make the videos as well as we can, whatever that means at the time we're making them. I want to make the videos in a way where it like sort of works for everybody. Like grandparents are supposed to be able to watch the videos with like their grandkids. It is hard to communicate science, isn't it? Why do scientists make it so difficult? <laughs> I'm not sure why scientists do it. I guess one way of making your thing like more exclusive is just like having your own language. Then I think like the complexity builds upon it itself. I, I can't begin to describe how horrible the language of immunology is. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. It's terrible. Nothing makes sense. I mean, just on that point, I just thought I'd read some of the things from your book, right, which is about the immune system. Reading it, it, it made me laugh so much. So one of the, you know, just describing the actions of the C3 protein. Oh, God. Uh, you write, imagine you would go through the day minding your business and suddenly hundreds of thousands of flies in unison covered your skin head to toe. This would be a horrifying experience and not something you could just ignore. So how do you come up with stuff like that? Everything complicated is only complicated because like someone is bad at explaining it. I'm, I'm convinced that every single fact and every single field can be turned into a number of different short stories. We as a species or as a society actually should, we should come together and make the decision to like simplify the language of scientific disciplines as much as it makes sense, of course, especially in immunology, it's like genuinely such an interesting field where people might have like fun reading about it if it wasn't so horrible. The human immune system is the most complex biological system we know after the human brain, and yet most of us never learn how it works or what it is. Your immune system consists of hundreds of tiny and two large organs. It has its own transport network spread throughout your body. Every day, it makes hundreds of billions of fresh cells organized like an army there are important reasons why people need to know about science, aren't there? You know, with vaccines as well. Yeah. So that, is that, does that motivate you as well? Good information beating bad information? My first and foremost goal is like spark curiosity, to make people interested in, in researching themselves. We will publish a video about this in December, so like we will like a little bit talk a little bit about like oversimplification in science. It's shocking how hard it is. I feel, like how, how, how hard it is to do properly, whatever this means. Um, because at the end, you need to make decisions about how and what to simplify, and you can't escape them. But you, you mentioned sparking curiosity as yeah. the kind of key. And I think you also wrote about you had a cancer diagnosis as well. So, and that was also a curious thing. Like cancer is not pleasant and, and chemo is not pleasant. I can't recommend that. It was super interesting actually learning how medicine works on, on that level, how you work. I used that time to ask a, like a bazillion questions and to like learn more and read more. I mean, I had time. Addressing my immune system, hey guys, what? How? Yeah. Like, like, you're not supposed to miss this. Like, why did you miss it? And learn, learning about that. And then again, like, not being angry at my body, but like grateful that with a little bit help from my doctors, it, yeah, melted and ate the tumors. This sort of information sort of makes you make better decisions in your life, right? If you're more informed about science, you yeah. make better decisions. Are there any things that make you 
optimistic for the future? What, what gets you excited rather than scared? Immunology. What we now know today is, it's, I mean, it's breathtaking. It's amazing. Like learning how we actually work and like how much of like complex systems we are. Vaccines, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, like all the stuff that's like helping people to live longer, healthier lives. I, th I think end disease should like very firmly be like one of the goals of humanity. And like we are going this direction. It's just like we have been going slowly, slowly, slowly and now super fast. So that's the positive side of the pandemic in a way. Yeah, for sure. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure like the pandemic will have done so much uh, for like virus research. What's the biggest misconception about the immune system? <laughs> so the biggest misconception I feel is that it is like a thing. Most people don't have like any sort of mental image. People feel confident about like saying, oh, my immune system does that, or like my immune system is good or weak or whatever. It's this like sort of cloudy entity in our minds. But in reality, it's not. It's like this super multifaceted organ system that like runs through your whole body interacts basically with like every process that you have. Incredible large army of many. And sadly, we don't learn en enough about the immune system to like imagine it, to have like a picture in our mind. Well, your, your description of meat mountains, I found <laughs> quite helpful and actually putting yourself in the shoes of a cell, which allows you to then put, to think about, you know, the size of a protein is the size of a fruit flies egg. You know, so even on that scale, you have tiny, tiny things and massive, yeah. massive things. Um, what is, there, is there anything that's your favorite bit of the immune system? What's your favorite bit? I, I think my favorite bit would be neutrophil extracellular trap. Like your soldier cells deciding to explode themselves in, in like a suicide bomber fashion. And like do, they, they do that by taking the whole genetic, uh, genetic, genetic code, the DNA, and unfolding it and mixing it with like all the sorts of like deadly chemicals they have inside them and then just vomiting it out. Some neutrophils go so far to push their suicide button and explode, casting wide and toxic nets made from their own DNA filled with deadly chemicals that trap and kill bacteria. Imagine like you took your brain out of your skull, like spiked it with like blades and then punched someone with that. Like, like you would expect to be like dead then, right? But like neutrophils sometimes survive that process and they keep on fighting. Like what even are those cells? The immune system is metal. And there's like so many stories like that. Oh. Someone who's never read anything about the immune system, what would you hope they come away with? I, I, I hope people come away from that with like a really genuine different appreciation of their body and like what it means to be, be sick. So like the next time they, they are sick, they're like, it's less scary. It's more concrete and like more, they, they feel more in control. And the other big thing, just be hopefully amazed by biology and your body and just like amazed by like all the universes inside of universes, inside of universes. And somehow all of it works. Are there any topics that sort of scare you? And there's climate change, there's coronavirus. Are there any bits that you, your psyche particularly latches onto that scares you? I think the, the topic that scares me most is climate change. Greenhouse gases trap energy from the sun and transfer it to our atmosphere. This leads to warmer winters, harsher summers. Dry places become drier and wet places wetter. Countless ecosystems will die while the rising oceans swallow coasts and the cities we build on them. I just could not research the topic without getting so depressed that I felt like I can't put this in a video. Like this, this is actually not helpful. This is like counterproductive if, if I don't find a way to, yeah, spin it differently. And I, like actually to talking to actual scientists, I, I got back from that climate change depression that was so bad. What is it that the scientists told you that made you able to tackle it? It's, it's, not, it's not the apocalypse. And if it's not the apocalypse, that means we can still do something. I feel like once you're in this like doomerism mindset, it's like a trap and it really traps you to like move forward or like back in any direction really. What would you say to scientists who are working on some abstract field? What can they do to better spread their ideas and their, their findings? Like talk to science communicators, make, make it easier for us to make it 
make your science approachable to other people. Like there's like a good relationship I feel between science scientists and science communicators, at least on YouTube. Yeah. Everybody's very open, very kind. Mm -hmm.